Okay, we're going to talk about the mental attitude because it's fine and dandy to get all these things done on the tee, but we got to take it on the golf course. Now, unfortunately, we have three types of mental attitudes. One is positive, we have a negative, and we have corrective. Now, when you go on the golf course, you all become corrective and negative. And one is really very, very involved with the other. How many times have you gone to the golf course and let's take the first tee and you took six on that first hole yesterday? What's your mind going to tell you today? Don't do it again. Don't do it again. Okay? Suppose that yesterday you, in your case, ma'am, if you were hitting a, 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 a shot and you have to go over water and you knock it in the water today, what's you going to be tomorrow? Don't get it in the water. These things are negative attitudes. You don't build things with negative attitudes. You build nothing but inconsistency. So when you go to that river hole, you don't say, I'm going to go over the water or I don't want to go into the water. Say, I'm going to make this swing the way I know how to make it. Okay? If you have to go over a bunker, you don't go over the bunker. You make the swing that you know how to make. And then the ball will go on the green. Okay? You always should have something you're trying to do, not something you're trying to keep from doing. Whether you're on the golf course or whether you're in any other activity, you can't live like that. Where are you going from here today when you leave here? Why didn't you tell me, well, I'm not going to the hairdresser, I'm not going to the store, I'm not going to visit my friend. Why didn't you tell me that? Why did you just simply say, I'm going home? You would never think of doing that. See, you lose your common sense. See? Now, when you are playing golf, do you ever say to yourself, that's where I want to go, no matter where you were yesterday? You keep trying to prevent things from happening. Always things you don't want to do. Okay, you're a man, you're teeing off the first hole, and you hit one onto the right, say, well, I'm gonna hit a mulligan. Where's the next one go? Left. left. 90 times out of 100, you'll go left. Why? You're not trying to hit it down the fairway. You're trying to prevent something from happening. That's the corrective attitude. Now, let me let, tell you a little story about myself, which is sad in a way, but very pointed to the, to the, to the question we're talking about now. In 1950, I led the Tucson Open for three and a half rounds. I'm playing with Sam Snead and Henry Williams from Pennsylvania. Snead had just buried the ninth hole, so he tees off first on 10. He hits a great big duck hook into the barns. And Della Torres, now mind you, I have not missed a fairway up to this point. Okay? Della Torres says, don't hit it left, so where do I go? Right. right. Now, in Tucson in those days, the El Rio Country Club was just fairway at what they call caliche on the sides. Caliche is a very heavy clay, but when you walk on it, it just gets into powder. And with the galleries, it was just like talcum powder. So my ball bounced along and then plops just like in a fried egg in a bunker. Okay? I've got a little tree right in front of me, which I've got to go under, and I've got to go over a bunker to the green. Okay? So I get over there, and of course, now I've got no shot. I really have nothing. But Mr. Sneed has hit a tree and bounced back in the fairway. Okay? So I take five, he gets three. Now, what in the world, what business did I have saying to myself, don't go left? I haven't missed a fairway for nine solid holes. I haven't missed a fairway for, what, almost 72 holes. 64, 60, whatever, 60 holes, whatever it is. He went left. Pardon? He went left. He went left. Why should I be concerned about that? Now, had I been, you know, wild or something like that, then I could understand, or had I been hooking or something like that, then I can understand why I might have thought that way. But I haven't missed a fairway. So on the next hole, now I hook it. I knock it in bunker, and sneeze down, right down the middle. And we hit the shots, and Snead is going over the green almost on the fly, and all of a sudden I see the ball trickling back on the green. Okay. Then I hit my shot, and I put it on the green. 
my folks and my and my um, wife were following me that day, and I see my wife in tears going someplace, and I said, where are you going? She said, I'm going to the car. And I said, well, what's the problem? She said, don't you know what happened? I said, no, what happened? She said, Sneed's ball hit me. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Talking about irony? Huh? See, it's like it's paying me back for having the bad thought on number 10. <laughs> See? Well, anyway, he goes 3-3 three, three, and I go 5-4. So he's got me by three shots in two holes. Why? Because I didn't stay with what I knew I had to do. I started getting consumed with a blessed ball again. You see? Now, it's sad in a way, like I said, but I hope that it helps you because no matter what the conditions are, you make that swing the way you know how to make and the heck with the rest of the stuff. And then you'll be fine. Why is it that when you go out to play and you play by yourselves, you play pretty well, you score fairly decent. And all of a sudden, Jerry says to you, come on, let's go out and play nine holes, we'll play for a buck a hole. How do you play now? Yeah. Number one, you don't want to lose to Jerry. Number two, you know that if you've got to play your best because he's better than you are, okay? Assumption. Uh, secondly, he's a long hitter, and boy, you're going to hit as far as he does. Now, what does that have to do with the mo movement that you've got to produce? Absolutely nothing. So when your mind is on all sorts of other things, is your mind on making the swing correctly? No. Absolutely not. Every one of my assistants that I have had has hit the ball well enough to win the assistance championship. And they have been in contention almost every time they've played it. The last young man that had a chance had it three under and had three holes to play. Six, five, six. Why? Thinking about winning. That's the closest he's come. He's four shots ahead of the field. You sure he didn't? He was trying not to make the same mistake you did and keep from hitting it right? Very possible. Very possible. Especially one of his guys did it. Did it. It's very possible. Whatever the, whatever the change of mind was, he didn't stay with what got him three under. So we're not thinking about the swing at that point, right? That's correct. So you have what I call an undirected golf swing. Now, an undirected golf swing is just as dangerous as an undirected car. Now, you get in your car, push the accelerator, and don't steer it, and let's see where you go. And your golf swing is just the same. This club is an inanimate object, and it will not say to you, John, remember, if you forget me, I'll take care of it until you remember me again. It's not going to say anything. It's not going to do anything. So you're the one that's got to pay attention to it and move it as you know it has to be moved to get the best result that you can. And when you play on the golf course, you tend to forget that. Your purpose changes. When you practice or you take a lesson, your purpose is to make your swing and follow your instructor's suggestions and so forth, and you work on your swing. When you get on the golf course, you want to score. And that's the worst thing you could ever think about. Because your score is a result of what? Good shots and good shots are results of what? Good swings. good swings. And you can't change the sequence because that ball is not going anywhere unless this club is in motion. So that comes first. Question? So whether you shoot a good score or a bad score really shouldn't make a difference, should it? That is correct. And if you stay with your concept, you won't shoot very many bad ones. If you take yourself and get the club swinging and you say, okay, now there's the flag. Now I'm going to swing this club and I'm going to swing it at the target. How many bad shots would you hit? That's correct. No matter what the conditions are. Now you're playing match play, for instance, with a man and you're two down. Okay? What has in your mind? I gotta get a birdie. I gotta get a birdie. I gotta get a birdie. So you go five, five, five. That's an undirected swing. Well sure. Because you're more concerned with the with the result and you've got to do something to get that result. Which is to move this club the proper way. So, so whether you shoot 80 or, or 70 should make a difference, should that is correct. E even though you've made when you shot 80, you, you've made Many good swings, and, and maybe the greens are hard, and you hit your shot on the green and roll over the hole, and you get up and down. So when you shot 80 or 70, it shouldn't make a difference. That is not for your performance, that's correct. For your thought process, shouldn't change. Now, you go out there and you shoot a bogey, or say you have a bad uh, streak and you get two doubles in a row. What's your feeling? What do you want to do now? Make it up. Now, I got to get a couple of birds. 
So you, you can't do that. Pardon? Pardon? It's the same way with an individual. Well, if you have a bad drive, you start thinking, well, I got to hit this one. I got to pound this to make up for it. That's drive. correct. That's the wrong attitude. You should try to make your swing as, as well as you can. And I'll guarantee you, if your concern is your golf swing and you make it as well as you can, you're not going to hit that better shot. You may not hit it perfect because we we're not machines, but you're not going to get going off on a tangent and try to, to, to just make up things and you're not going to get it done. There's just no way that's going to happen. Um, you can't make up for bad holes. All you can do is continue along with And try to hand. make not mistake by trying to do it correctly. You see, if, if you today go out and lose $20, just you lose it someplace. And tomorrow you, lose, you, you, you find 50 Have you made it up? No. Pardon? If you make 50 the next day. Yeah. You have you made it? If you find 50 oh, have yeah, you made, made it? it? No. No, because if you hadn't lost the 20 you still have 70 So that 20 is going forever. You may feel better about it, but you haven't made it up. Okay, now let us suppose that you say to yourself, gee, I took a double, and then you have a great streak, and you, you birdie every hole after that. Have you made it up? No, because if you hadn't got the bow, you'd still be too less. So no matter what you do, that's on the card, and you've got it. So no sense fighting it. So all you do is go right back to your swing. When you took the six, it means you didn't make the swings the way you were supposed to. Otherwise, you wouldn't have gotten six. I certainly do. do when it? I play competitively or just with my friends, I don't hit a shot that I don't make the swing personally, consciously with this club. But you don't think about the score, do you? No. But you, 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 even, you never think about the score? No. Even if you're five under par? No. In other words, you, you say you think about the swing, but you don't think about how to swing. Right? Not the how, no, never. I think of what I want to do. I'll give you an example. I played a little tournament called the Collarwood up in Fond du Lac one time, okay? And I was just playing along and having a great time and playing pretty well, you know? The score is the furthest thing from my mind. And Bob Kivlin was keeping our score and on the 18th hole, he says, boy, are you playing well today? You know how you stand? I said, no, I don't want to know. <laughs> you did not know? No. See? So I played the 18th hole and birdied it. What do you think I shot that afternoon? 28 on the back nine. And I didn't know that I would, I knew I was playing well, but I, if you had asked me, what's your score like he did, I didn't know. Now, when I won the National Seniors in 73, my good friend Lou Warburg came up to me on the 16th hole and he said, you wanna know how you stand? I said, no, I, I got three holes to play. I said, tell me after I've finished. Are there days when you do know how no, you stand? very seldom. You know, Emmanuel, I do, I, I'm more aware of when I, when I'm playing for myself, just fooling around of the score, then I, if I'm in competition and if I'm really playing something that I went, where I want to play well, I want to get, my mind is so much on the swing that you couldn't, I couldn't see anything else. Yes? Well, you might have just answered it right there. You know, let's be realistic. Every time you play is not a tournament. You're out there for four or five hours, and there's a lot, and a lot of things happen and change, and there's more that goes through your mind than your next swing. How do you control, you know, you, you know, the human mind is a wonderful thing. It can do anything it wants to do. See, when I showed you these swings here, my mind was undoing exactly what I was talking about while I was swinging. My mind wasn't not trying to be hit a good shot because you people are watching. I'm trying to make my motion, and because I make my motion, I know it's going to come out okay. You see? But the problem lies in the fact that when you have what I call an undirected swing, when this club is moving without a purpose of doing anything, it can go anywhere. It can come in anyway, you see? And when I went to the seniors, and, and Luke came up to me and, and asked me that, and I said, no, I, wait till I'm finished and then tell me. Now, I knew I was playing okay, but I couldn't have told you where I stood or what the score was. So on the 18th hole, I hit a bad drive and knocked it into a bunker, and I'm standing this way, 175 yards away from the hole, water on the right, and the, and the trap, the bunker is at this angle, the green is over here. Everything conducive to what? Hitting it in the water. Okay? So I looked at the situation and I said, well, I'm not going to go for the green. I'm going to play a little four iron shot, three quarters, and knock it over there. And if it rolls around this way, fine. If not, I'll chip it up. Okay? So that's exactly what I did. 
I knocked it on the fringe, I didn't make a very good shape, I missed my putt, took bogey. Suppose that I had known that I was two shots ahead and I'm in this situation right here. What do you think would have happened? <laughs> I'm going right for that flag. I know, I guarantee you, I would have gone for the flag because I wanted to protect that two-shot lead and say, well, if I don't get exactly, I still got five. See? And I would have hit the worst-looking shot you've ever seen. But I see, I hit the shot without pressure, concentrating on what I wanted to do with a very relaxed attitude, knowing that my procedure, my decision was correct, not worrying about whether that meant winning the tournament or not. So when I hold my last spot for my bogey, Lou came up to me and he said, you won. And I said, thank you very much. Now I want to know. So you create the pressure. We create the pressure. Oh, 90% of it. If we think properly, there's some you know, pressure. That's right. Because if you, if you make this swing that I'm making now, see, I, I, that was the first ball I hit in a week. I haven't had a chance to hit balls at all. That's the first shot I hit in a week that you saw me hit today. But I know if I make that swing, I'm going to make it. And especially with you people here, I better be sure I do it. If you started thinking about what we think, if you missed it, you probably missed it because you weren't thinking about the swing. That's correct, because I, I have no feel. Now, those few shots I've hit gave me enough feel to do what I wanted this afternoon. But the purpose is I've got to make this swing. And I don't care what the conditions are, I've got to make the swing. And that's what your mental attitude has to be involved with when you play. You talk a lot about making the next swing, but what about the shot? Well, well you look at it this way. Look at it this way. When I say, for instance, you say to me, okay, now, see that bird down there? Well, I want you to hit a shot that far. Okay, so I say, okay, now, what club am I going to use to get there? So I go to my bag and I say, well, I think I'll use a three-quarter wedge. What's left? Right. See, once I made my mind up and I say, okay, now I've got a seven iron here. But let's say that you say to me, okay, now you, you want to get that ball to, around that flag over there, all right, the, the bird, okay? So I just look at it, and now you see what I do is I make my swing. I take it from here to there. And get the birdie. <laughs> see, I mean, I'm not trying to hit the bird. I'm not trying to hit it. I just made the swing that I decided upon when I went to my bag and said, this is the club I want. I'm convinced. <laughs> you see? But it's, it's a performance that, that you want to produce that will give you the result. Now, if I try to hit that bird, I'll bet you I don't come anywhere near it. And that's all I think about. made that choice by what he wanted to do on that hole and not thought that he was four shots. Exactly. And if he had done that, and I think Seve, when he knocked that ball in the water, was doing the same thing. It's mental errors. See, you Those want something. Spaniards, you can't, they, you, they never think straight. No, that we don't. <laughs> 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 but it's so important. I can't tell you how important this mental attitude is when you're trying to play and you're trying to play well. Because remember that your score of 72 is composed of what? 72 independent movements. And you better make each movement the way you want to to be able to get the 72. If you don't make them right, you can kiss your 72 goodbye. You can shoot 80 and have a very successful day. Yes. Oh, yes. Sure. Sure. And, well, a lot of things can happen, but... You but don't, excuse me, you don't uh, recommend then what some people do about if there's trouble on the left, you play... Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. That's, that's course management. That's a different phase of it entirely. Oh, I... Yes. But, but if you uh, really are thinking that you can hit the ball down the middle of the fairway, then why not just get in the middle and hit it down the middle of the fairway? I agree with that, too. But don't forget we're human beings. And we don't always do it. See? I mean, you have to accept the fact that I can't go up to you and say, okay, now I've set the dial, it's going to work. No, but, I mean, isn't it already letting a negative thought enter your mind when you say that there's a problem out there? No. No. No, you're being realistic. You see the water there, and you see nothing on the left side. Now your, your, your job is to hit it, say, on the left side of the fair. I wouldn't go in the rough, okay? You hit it, but you hit it straight at it, and you do the same thing I did with this bird. You take the club, and you swing it, and right where you want to go. Now, if your feel is very good, you can go right for the middle of the fairway. Now, uh, if there's trouble on the right, and it's a drive, I tee off on the right side of the tee because mentally that puts you in the direction away from the, from the trouble. If your trouble is on the left, you tee off on the left side of the tee. What did you say before about if you'd have aimed at the bird, you wouldn't have hit it? If I had tried to hit the bird. Oh, 
just go up there and make the ball hit the bird. See, I wasn't trying to get the ball there. I was trying to get my club to do what it had to do. And therefore, the club sent it to the bird. I didn't. What do you do when you're having a bad day and you're hitting everything right and there's trouble on the right? Steve, we have those days all the time. You had them, I have them. All I do is I keep trying to do the right thing. You wouldn't overprotect a little bit? No, 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 no. I never expect to do it wrong. Whether I do it or not, it doesn't matter. I never expect to miss a shot or to make a bad swing. I try to make a good swing all the time. Now, what happens when this attitude, like I was telling Jerry the other day, or yesterday, uh, I, I played for the first time uh, with one of my members, and I hadn't hit a ball for three weeks. So I've worked all day, and at 6 o'clock, 6.30, I go out to play. No practice, no nothing. So, you know, I hit the ball just miserably, and it, it, it was almost embarrassing. But I kept trying to do the same thing, take it from here to there, and just, and by the time I got to the fourth hole, or the fifth hole, you could see my attitude getting back to normal, okay? Well, I kept doing the same thing. Well, by the time I got to the ninth and seventh and eighth hole, or eighth and ninth holes, I was hitting the ball fine. So you were considered that a successful round? Absolutely. Probably more successful than had I started playing well and shot 32. So you rebuilt. Because I kept my mind on what I wanted to do, and because of it, I got better. And how many of you start to play golf badly and you get worse? Mm -hmm. Because you keep trying to fix things all the time instead of going right to what you're trying to do and keep trying to do it. See? And when I play badly, that usually happens. Now, the degree of improvement varies from time to time, but I always finish playing better than I started if I keep my mind on what I'm trying to do. You know, I have uh, some days when I go out and I really hit the ball well. And sure. I, I just don't score at all. The well, the scoring, actually, I'm sure you realize it's a different phase entirely. You've got to have good touch for your chip shots. You've got to have good feel for your putts, you know, and if you, you got a little luck, too. I mean, and if a ball... Of course, there's management there, too. I yes. If you get uh, in the rough and you try to hit a wood when you probably should have hit a five iron... That, then you're going to pay for it. That's Everybody correct. Everybody golf wants to score well. That's part of it. Yeah. Really. And, yeah. Uh, so scoring well is predominantly management around the green, uh, well, it's, it's, everything is included. You can't give one thing more important than the other. Everything is important. If you don't drive well, you can't score. If you don't putt well, you can't score. If you don't chip well, you can't score. If you don't hit the greens, you can't score. Because everything puts pressure on the next shot. 